हेलो एवरीबॉडी वेलकम टू संस्कृत कोर्स फॉर बिगिनर्स वी आर हैविंग ए बिग क्लास बिग ऑनलाइन क्लास टुडे एंड विल स्टार्ट विद द वेरी बेसिक्स सो आई एम नॉट एक्सपेक्टिंग that you would know sanskrit or even the script before the class is started so before we start we'll have the prayers our opening prayers and you can all chant with me together first mantra first one by one so will will have om guru brahma guru vishnu guru devo maheshwara guru sakshat para brahma tasmai shri gurave namaha the meaning of this mantra is that guru is brahma the creative aspect of divine guru is also vishnu the preserving aspect of divine guru is also the lord maheshwara the dissolution aspect of divine indeed guru is the supreme being supreme brahman to that guru i do bow then there is this mantra teacher student mantra this is we'll chant together those who know otherwise you can just see on the screen and listen om sahana bhavatu sahana bhunaktu saha viryam karva vahai tejasvi navadhi tamastu ma vidvesha vahai om shanti 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 hi then we have this next mantra mahamrityunjay mantra and normally this mantra is not chanted as an opening prayer but we will use this mantra for praying for so many people who are suffering because of corona virus and we'll chant this together three times ओम त्रयंबक यजामहे सुगंधि पुष्टिवर्धन उर्वाक इव बंधना मृत्योर्मुक्षीयृता ओं त्रयंबक यजामहे सुगंधि पुष्टिवर्धन उर्वाक इव बंधना मृत्योर्मुक्षीयृता ओं त्रयंबक यजामहे सुगंधि पुष्टिवर्धन उर्वाक इव बंधना मृत्योर्मुक्षीयृता ओं शांति 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 द मीनिंग ऑफ दिस मंत्र इज दैट वी बाव टू थ्री आई लॉर्ड रेफरिंग टू लॉर्ड शिव हु इज full of fragrance of wonderful qualities who gives us the nourishment both material and spiritual and we pray to him to free us from the death in the same manner a ripe cucumber gets detached from the vine when it ripens without any effort without any pain so that is what 
we are praying. So we'll see these mantras that the meaning of these mantras and as a part of the Sanskrit class, we'll come back to them to discuss grammatically so that you can understand how the meaning is derived. So first, a few First, a few overview points regarding Sanskrit. So, origin and history. Sanskrit has unknown origins. It is considered one, one of the most ancient languages in the world, if not the most ancient. And its history, we have from the time of Vedas. And the tradition of India believes that Vedas are timeless, in the sense not referring to the books, but referring to the knowledge contained therein. And that is, those Vedas are written in Sanskrit. So from that perspective, there is no particular timeline of Sanskrit associated. But Sanskrit, has a little bit of a history in the sense that we have two styles of Sanskrit, Vedic and uh, so I'll, I'll just share with you the uh, my whole screen so that you can see the whiteboard. And I'll, I'll write on the screen so that you can actually see. So, two styles. Vedic and Classic. So, Vedic style is for the Vedas. So all the Vedas are written in the Vedic Sanskrit. And everything else is written in the classic Sanskrit. What is the difference? It is something like Old English and Modern English. So if you learn one, you can practically understand the older one, but there are some forms. The words are used a little differently and some forms of the words may change. So we study normally classic Sanskrit. That's where all other scriptures except the Vedic scriptures are written, as well as the other texts. And Vedic Sanskrit, if those who are interested, they can actually learn those particular forms and they can learn, they can understand the Vedas. That requires a little bit more different vocabulary and different grammar. Since this is a very big class, the way we will try to manage this class is you can send me the comments. I can't read all the comments at the same time, but do send your questions. You can also write after the class the questions on this email, which I sent you in the welcome email, learnsanskrit at career.org. We'll also have the, some exercises in the class, which you have to basically work on the class. So that will give you some practice. And uh, you can submit those answers to again learn Sanskrit at career.org. Okay. So we'll, we'll study the classic Sanskrit, this one. Now the grammar. So grammar is a very, very important part in Sanskrit. The tradition of grammar actually starts with the language itself. And uh, 
right now the most celebrated grammarian is panini so the way panini panini or in this is the devanagari script and in the roman script it would be panini panini is the most celebrated grammarian for sanskrit and when did panini happen nobody knows for sure one thing is clear that he happened after mahabharata which tradition believes about 5000 years old and we know that he happened at least 2600 years ago so between that time period sometime panini happened and panini wrote a grammar which is called ashtadhyayi so i'll write it ashtadhyayi so i'm trying to write in both the fonts devanagari and i'll explain to you those fonts ashtadhyayi means a book of eight chapters panini's grammar consists of multiple rules or formula you could say spread over eight chapters the so another thing regarding the grammar of sanskrit it's a descriptive grammar what does that descriptive grammar means that language already existing and then i am actually trying to figure out what are the rules of the language and put them in a coherent form and that's what the grammar is it's not like grammar came first and language started following those rules and develop so anything which is also previous to mahabharata for example also follows the same structure panini actually took all those scriptures and so on the way people were speaking and saw that what rules are being followed so it's called a descriptive grammar uh, many people actually have this confusion they feel that language actually follows grammar but it's the other way around grammar actually follows the language and uh, the way panini actually so there were many attempts before that before panini panini himself has given the names of 10 grammarians can can you all see, you can just say comment yes can you all see the whiteboard which i'm sharing because somebody said that whiteboard they cannot see the shared whiteboard okay all right so i got the comment that yes you can see the whiteboard so that's that's fine uh, you uh you uh so ashtadhyayi this book of eight chapters panini was one of the last original grammarian who actually wrote the complete grammar of sanskrit starting from scratch and uh, this is considered one of the masterpieces to the extent that panini attained such a perfection that after panini the original grammar tradition almost stopped because panini reached to the limit where there was not much of a possibility of improvement and to codify an existing language with all its variations into such a set rules of grammar that's considered such an astounding work that most of the people today consider panini ashtadhyayi as one of the one of the most intellectual work ever produced by human intellect and indeed if you study panini you would actually be concurring with that conclusion i have studied some and it's just amazing so those of you who are interested to learn sanskrit deeper to really understand what the grammar is 
I would recommend you to some time. So we will not be follow. Of course, we will not be following the Ashtadhyay here. That is considered a very advanced work. It, that despite that, the rules which we will be discussing, they are coming from the same book, Ashtadhyay. It's a very small book. If you look at, if you just take the text of the book and put it in the full scale papers, like type on the computer eight and half by eleven, you would probably get the whole text in twenty pages, and that's it. That actually takes traditionally people were studying just that book with all its commentaries and examples for 12 years that's how the tradition of grammar actually in india people were studying for 12 years just mastering the grammar and we would be sharing just want to let you know we would be sharing all the materials including whatever you see on the whiteboard and some other notes with you so and uh, class video itself class recording video itself so please be aware that uh, all the material which you are seeing on the screen as well as the class recording itself will be shared with you and uh, i have already sent you that link in that welcome email and uh, you, you so you don't have to take notes of everything whatever you are seeing on the screen uh, so you can focus more on uh, learning aspect so uh this book paninis it is the the formula are written very much like in the computer style so when i say computer style means very logical so if you say like first rule if this applies then this then this else this and that is then else logic can go like eight or nine loops sometimes to see something put that kind of logic in grammar rules at that time it's just amazing and then he has also defined the variables uh, the range variables and uh, to make sure that the formula which he has put in remains so short that even taking one letter out of the whole book is not possible without disturbing the meaning and uh, that makes it extremely difficult to study to in today's time because uh, and that's why there are so many commentaries and explanatory explanations and examples to understand panini ashtadhyayi so grammar tradition in sanskrit is considered a very sacred tradition in the sense that grammar is considered one of the six limbs of the language in order to understand the uh, vedas uh, Uh, so this this called sharanga or six limbs and in today's time when sanskrit is not truly a language which people learn as a mother tongue like it's a, it's a language which you have to learn you can just pick up the language by being born in a particular place like english even if you do not know how to write a simple single letter in english if you are born in a place where english is the language is spoken you would pick up english that's not the case with sanskrit sanskrit necessarily necessarily has to be learned in order for you to understand either read or speak or write and the way to understand sanskrit is actually to study grammar so these are the uh just and just to understand that grammar is considered very very important very critical for learning sanskrit language unlike any other language grammar in sanskrit people actually revel just in being grammarian so grammarian is actually considered a career in those who study sanskrit just studying grammar so the whole career they are just mastering the grammar and when i say mastering the grammar that is primarily just this book of which has 4000 formulas ashtadhyayi just this book mastering that book for the whole whole life and you can understand the complexity of this book the kind of variations the kind of things which get, which allowed that people actually use are they are having as a career like in varanasi which is considered in india a city of learning of traditional learning if you go 
there are people who know Sanskrit and they are primarily grammarians. So they would be able to basically answer all your grammar questions. Uh, not that other people who know Sanskrit won't know grammar, but they would go into such nitty gritty, such exceptions, such details that which other people will not be. So, so that's uh, uh, just I just find this fact amazing that grammarian as a career actually. So very very long tradition of grammar. Now alphabet and script. So this is uh, one of the building blocks of any language, and we will see that what all is there in Sanskrit. So remember first, the language is actually a series of sounds. Those sounds are identified as words and sentences so out of those sounds which are identified as the words people take some units of sound and say those are the letters which are the basic building block and that becomes an alphabet as a language evolves generally it's the spoken part which comes first language is developed as a spoken language and then the written part comes actually in sanskrit the name of language is called bhasha which actually means the one which that is spoken uh, so in sanskrit the sound units which are identified they are generally known 50 though we'll see that how they make up 50 um, and those are so precisely arranged that it's actually extremely systematic and scientific that there is no difference in Sanskrit that how is it written and how is it spoken. It's a perfectly phonetic language. Whatever language I have come across, I have not found even a single other language which is actually completely phonetic, that there are no exceptions. So if you are speaking, you can just write and if you are seeing a written language as long as you know that how to pronounce you can actually pronounce it perfectly so there is a one-to-one -one relationship between a sound unit and the corresponding alphabet uh, in english we always have this problem that if you are writing a spelling you also have to give a pronunciation key how to pronounce the word so in my childhood, I, there was always this confusion that C U T cut, B U T bud, but P U T put. And there is, I, at least as far as I know, there is no uh, logic behind that why the pronunciation in English is so different from the spelling. Uh, now, the languages which are derived from Sanskrit in Indian languages primarily, they also follow the same alphabet and they also follow this phonetic aspect of the language yet there has always been a little bit over a period of time as per the usage there has been a, some deviation where the language has not remained perfectly phonetic so for example in Bang bengali even though it is the same alphabet but in bengali generally the three s sounds three sha sounds are all pronounced as one so like that, in most of the Indian languages, there has been slight deviation so that it has not remained a perfectly phonetic. Nevertheless, by and large, they are phonetic languages. Uh, but Sanskrit, as, as it is, it's a perfectly phonetic language. So we'll see the alphabet of the Sanskrit. We also see the scripts. And we will also see that how do we type the Sanskrit on computer. So.
so let me open the file for alphabet so i'll increase the size here so that you can see So this is just the overall alphabet. So there are vowels which are arranged in a particular section. There are cons and then there are consonants. So like in English, where the vowels are a, e, i, o, u, and they are not in one place. In alphabet, in Sanskrit, all the vowels are actually in one place and all the consonants then follow thereafter. So, so this, this is just a overall alphabet and then I'll tell you the vowels. So these are the vowels. So I'll pronounce the vowels and you can see they are written in two scripts. This is Devanagari and this is called IAST. IAST means International Alphabet for Sanskrit Transliteration. Also called the Roman alphabet because we derive it from the uh, Roman letters. Traditionally, Sanskrit is written in Devanagari alphabet, and in modern times, many of the books are also written in the IAST, this Roman alphabet. So all our Kriya Yoga publications, we follow both Devanagari as well as the uh, IAST. And uh, it is good to get familiar for sure with IAST because that is something you can easily get familiar. And those who are interested to learn higher Sanskrit, they should also learn Devanagari. And I'll, I'll share with you a few resources which actually you can uh, use to learn Devanagari. Uh, so I'll, I'll just uh, say the syllables aloud so you understand the sound. You are, uh, I hope you understand being this online class and a huge class, we will not be able to have any practice. I will not be able to check that whether you are pronouncing correctly or not. If there's, there was an opportunity here last year in Miami Ashram, where we had a group and I could actually physically take a class and work on the pronunciation, I would be happy to do so. Another physical class if in Miami Ashram or somewhere else to um, uh, those who are interested in learning the correct pronunciation of these uh, letters. Uh, but there are resources on the website and which I'll share with you. Uh, so, in this class, our these Sanskrit classes, we'll use, I'll try to use both the scripts, but for sure Roman script, because most of the participants, they are not from India, and consequently they do not know Devanagari. Even in India, many people do not do, know Devanagari. But, so I'll definitely use the transliteration, the IEST script, while using this class. And also I'll use most of the times Devanagari as well, so that you understand that uh, how is it written in Devanagari script. And those who know Devanagari or are knowing some Devanagari, I would recommend them to practice it and master Devanagari script. So regarding bubbles, I'll just change them aloud. A, A, E, E, U, U, R, 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 A, I, O, A, U, M. 
so this is the sound of just the like this kind of sound mm, and this is exhalation sound like we say ramaha so it's not like ha it's more like an exhalation sound and that's why these are considered in the vowels because the vowels and the consonant, I do not know if you understand the difference that how a particular sound unit is I, de defined as a vowel and how a sound unit is defined as a consonant. Uh, vowel is actually something you can pronounce independently and you can chant like for a longer time. So I can say ah like this. But if a consonant like has to be pronounced along with the vowel, cannot be just independently pronounced these two that's why they are considered in the vowels but they are not like they do not appear ever by themselves they always appear as uh, sounds associated with the vowel so you will never see the these kind of sounds these are the two special cases just by themselves they will always be followed by following a vowel sound so for example i could say ramaha and in that case it is a and then this sound so a and then this sound like this so uh, i will not spend a lot of time on the sounds i know that it will not be possible for you to follow all in this class but you can probably practice it and learn it later on i'll share with you a link whereby you can do so. Uh, then the consonants. So consonants are beautifully arranged in a tabular format here. And this is the only a script I have found actually only language where the alphabet is defined in a tabular format rather than just simply a list. And this table format is actually very important here. And I'll increase it a little bit more so that you can see more clearly. So there are these many consonants in Sanskrit, but we'll focus first on this 25 consonants the table of five by five and this is these are considered by the so in the column if you look at these are from the place in the mouth where you make the sound so guttural means these sounds are made from the throat these sounds are made from the palate that means just above the teeth this sound are cerebral or made from the upper palate. These sounds are made when the tongue touches the teeth. And these are the sound in order to make you have to touch your lips. So labial is lips. So these are considered a very, very structured method as I said, I have not known any other language where the alphabet is so structured. If you look at here, in this row, these sounds are made unaspirated, means when you are speaking and you place your hand here, you will not be able to perceive the flow of air on your hand. In these sounds which are aspirated, you can actually perceive the flow of exhalation. So same sound. So these and these sounds, the first and second row, the only difference is that you can say the same sounds with an exhalation and you would be able to produce these sounds. And because of this scientific way, the whole thing is structured. Even for people who in the West, they are not having these sounds in English. For example, like kha, this sound is not available in English or gha. One can be actually trained to produce, to learn these sounds because they are very systematically defined that where the position of your tongue 
should be in your mouth and whether it's ex exhalation or not in order to make these sounds. The hard and soft sounds related to the fact that these are called like sonnet sounds. So it's like sort of what is it called ghosha, where it is uh, it you you can perceive the difference between like when you say k and g ka and ga it is coming from a little deeper in uh, into the throat uh, and it sounds soft so that's why in english it is called soft but uh, in sanskrit the word is actually ghosha and then these are the nasal sounds that means these sounds will always have an element of the nasal 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 uh, you would be pronouncing these sounds not purely from the nose, but also the nose would be involved. <clears throat> so I'll just speak these sounds and then you, I, I'll show you the places where you can learn later on. So the way alphabet is ordered, it is ordered in this fashion. So ka, kha, ga, Gha, mm. then palatal. Palatal means the tongue is actually just above the teeth. teeth. Cha, cha, ja, ja, nya. This sound is very similar to what in Spanish this letter actually represents. Uh, then cerebral, the upper palate, the tongue, like what, how do you say in English T, like that kind of sounds. So ta, ta, da, dha, na. Then dental sounds. If you make these sounds, you notice that the tongue will be touching the teeth. Ta, tha, da, dha, na. Labial sounds, when you make these sounds, the lips would always close in order to make these sounds. Pa, pa, ba, bha, ma. Then we have these semi vowels. Actually, these should come first and then th th this will come later. So, so these are ya, ra, la va and these are the so the reason i had put in this order was basically to show that these are the uh, throat sound but the order is like this sha sha sa ha so these are the sounds Th this this sound the three s sounds this is a palatal sound as you can see here that was the reason why it was put in that way this is the cerebral sound which is the tongue touching the upper palate so the same sound you can actually make and thus this this is the same sound which you can just have the, the dental so tongue is touching the teeth so the three sibilants they are called they actually are just produced based upon where is your tongue in the mouth and ha and this is a very common sound some of the words i'll just so that we will cover that a is like this is the sanskrit word like ataha a atma e icha e Isharaha, U, Uvacha, U, Urdham, Ru, Rushihi. Then these sounds, which are Ruri, we don't have really words starting with these sounds. And this sound simply does never appear, the long Ruri never appears actually in sen classical Sanskrit. Uh, Ru, this appears only very rarely so these are very very rare uh, this is not rare actually this is quite common this is not so common but it does appear uh, just that the words don't start with the sound 
ए ए एकम आई ऐरावतम ओ ओजसा औ औषधम देन एज आई सेड दीज साउंड एंड एक्सेलेशन साउंड दे डोंट एपियर इंडिपेंडेंटली दे ऑलवेज फॉलो ए वॉबल साउंड का कर्म खा खम गा गति घा घोष नो वर्ड विल एपियर दे स्टार्ट विद दिस साउंड सो दे विल ऑलवेज बी एपियरिंग इन द मिडिल समवेयर सो दिस इज लाइक संगम इट इज सिमिलर टू लाइक आई एन जी साउंड इन साउंड इन इंग्लिश देन चा चक्रम छा छंद जा जगत झा झषाण द रीजन यू विल सी दीज वर्ड्स बिकॉज दे हैव बीन टेकन फ्रॉम गीता फॉर मोस्ट पार्ट एंड सम ऑफ यू हू हैव स्टडीड गीता माइट फाइंड दम फेमिलियर न्या संजय अगेन दिस साउंड डज नॉट हैव अ वर्ड स्टार्टिंग विद दैट टा टक्कर Uh, so there are not surprisingly many words in sanskrit which actually start with this uh, letter ta and tha they are so tha thakkah da damaru dha dhalam na krishna uh, again this sound does not appear in the middle of starting the word this sound only appears in the middle ta tapah tha thud da dandah tha dharma ना नमः पा पंच फा फा फलम बा बलम भा भक्त मा मत या यज्ञ रा रजस ला लभे वा वचनम शा शक्यम शा षड सा सत्यम हा हितम क्षा so this is technically speaking not considered uh, uh, separate letter in the alphabet because it is a consonant so the two letters actually come together ka and sha they actually make sha but for most purposes many people they include it in the alphabet so just so that's how it makes 50 you can see there are 50 actually so that's how it makes a 50 letters actually in the alphabet in sanskrit so this is uh, for the alphabet uh, now the script so sanskrit is actually considered a perfectly phonetic language what does that mean is that you can potentially create any system of symbols and say that this symbol represents this sanskrit sounds and you can create your own own script and that would be fine so just on the lighter note you could actually say for example you could say that a small square i represents this as the a sound or and then you can say a rectangle you can say this i represents as a sound you can have like a triangle and say this i represents as e sound and you could have like this and you can say this is long e sound and you can create like this and that will become your alphabet the only thing is alphabet is only meaningful when more people are using it if you are the only one who knows the alphabet then it's truly not much useful so uh, but it's it's actually possible to create a completely new alphabet and it will be fine one can actually read it just fine sanskrit actually using that alphabet so because it's a perfectly phonetic language there have been many many scripts for sanskrit uh, many scripts in sanskrit are found in many languages actually many scripts actually uh uh so we will for our purpose i want to introduce you to three scripts in sanskrit and those three scripts are primarily for to be used on the computer 
so one is devanagari we already learned that another is iast which you also you saw international alphabet of sanskrit transliteration then the another one is i trans it's called i trans indian languages transliteration why do i need to have i trans is simply i can actually do it on the computers that is the only reason why would i actually have this script that computers do not allow me to directly type the devanagari the, in the keyboards for example the general keyboard which you have qwerty keyboard q w r t y qwerty keyboard it does not have the symbols for i a s t so in order to type on the computer i actually create this is a new script which uses just those symbols which are there on your keyboard and using those symbols there is a mapping and there are softwares which actually can produce devanagari and uh, uh, iast so because i just told you sanskrit scripts they are interchangeable because it's the mapping of the sound it's it's a perfectly phonetic language you can actually easily transliterate from one script to another script and there are tools available actually for that so one of the documents which i actually have shared with you on your uh, which is shared with you actually on the uh this common resource which we are having so this this document it has all the mapping actually so it has devanagari iast and i trans that means if you look at an i trans column all the symbols you can actually use on the keyboard so these are all the symbols which are available on the keyboard and wherever you see the two options like long a like capital a or two small a's that means that you could use either one either of these options to produce these characters so there is a mapping available and this i trans column this allows you to actually get these symbols in devanagari and iast so i trans is all the symbols which are available on your keyboard so one of the tools which i like actually and there are others but i like this one which allows you to so i'll i'll just use this uh, uh tool actually here and uh, i'll show you that how how does this work so i'll increase the size so that you can probably clearly see so i'll show you how does this tool work so i trans and to devanagari let's say i want to convert so i want to write rama now if you look at it's the this scheme here it's kind of intuitive so if you want to write rama it is like r and then a m a and h this is the symbol for exhalation or visarga so like rama it produces you can just change it to i a s t and it produces rama and this you can actually copy in your any application so i can actually take this copy and even if i open the notepad i can actually have this symbol which is it looks a little bit sometimes strange but generally it it works actually uh, so because these are unicode symbols and uh, so they they can appear actually here i think it is because of the font it is looking a little bit bold and but idea is that any windows application or most of any applications including on your cell phones you can actually use these characters because these are unicode and even the devanagari so i can actually take this here and say rama like this so 
this is the way to actually type it on the computer you can use the itrans scheme you can generate and as you can see in this tool there are like number of scripts so you can actually create it in bengali bengali or other scripts like telugu tamil odia and also there so as you can see there are multiple scripts people try to create many scripts from the roman characters to write sanskrit because devanagari was not always very easy for people to learn and but for our purpose we are just concerned about these three scripts so i trans so i'll say devanagari which is then i trans or i st so just to again tell you this is the mapping this mapping document i have already put in our shared drive you can actually access this document and it gives you the mapping of all the devanagari all the sanskrit alphabet in all the three scripts and in order to type on the computer you type this use this tool sanskrit and you can get either of these scripts just so that let you just to let you know that even though you can see that notepad shows these scripts and any application will actually show the show these scripts i can actually even send you the comments on the zoom chat in these scripts there are couple of fonts which we use and these are also used in our kriya publication books actually so sanskrit 2003 for devanagari and this paitu this is for iast these are pretty good fonts can be used in word and other other applications and i would recommend you but not necessary i would recommend you to download and install you don't have to note down these links because as i said the document is already shared with you and you can actually download and install these fonts but you can still see the characters even if you don't have these fonts installed then there there is another uh, site which i found for which is useful for learning devanagari there are like many resources on the net which you can search i'm just sharing one here with you which i liked actually so uh, this requires adobe uh, flash actually um, and uh, you have to actually allow it in order for this to work um, uh, this particular site and uh, this i cannot apparently zoom much more but you can see here the consonants and it actually allows you to how to write devanagari devanagari characters like this and you can actually have the sound and and with an example and like this so this is it and then you can also have the test so there it can actually say that make a sound and then you can test and say which one i choose and then it will show you whether it's correct or not so it's it's a nice uh, site you can use that you can also search on the web there are many resources for learning devanagari and you could uh, pick up if you want to learn devanagari as i said if we take our advanced sanskrit courses i would actually take those primarily in devanagari so those who are really interested in learning sanskrit for advanced purposes they should learn devanagari mm. but for this course devanagari is not a requirement as i would be using the roman script um, uh, throughout the course now with this much you understood the alphabet the script and how to type sanskrit on the computer uh, this at this point of time i would actually like you to 
take a small break i'll give you an exercise because it is very important for you to get familiar with the script so i'll give you a little bit of an exercise you can start writing uh, so this exercise i'll post also in the uh, i'll also post in uh, in your uh, share drive but for now we can actually do this so this is the exercise one and the exercise is that copy the opening prayer shlokas so the remember three shlokas we chanted and uh, i'll put them on the screen opening prayer shlokas on a piece of paper and those who know devanagari they should copy in both the scripts that means devanagari and iast uh, those who don't know devanagari should copy in iast and you can take the photo of your work and send us by email you always mention whenever you are sending the solution to the exercise to that email an email just in case you don't remember but it is learn sanskrit at kriya.org and always mention the exercise in the subject line so that we know that you are sending the uh, solution of your exercise rather than uh, just any question or suggestion so the, right now it is 10 o'clock uh, 10 in 10 minutes i would say use this as an exercise right now and then we resume the class after that uh, if there are any questions you can write to me in the zoom chat you can always send your suggestions and questions and exercise solutions on the email address which i uh, showed you okay so i'll uh, stop sharing the video uh, screen would be shared and i'll also mute myself uh, after uh, i will put the prayers so these are the opening prayers which so all you have to do is on a piece of paper uh, write these prayers uh, at least in the iast font that way you start getting familiar that how does the font look like uh, and uh, those who know devanagari they should write in devanagari also so you have 10 minutes time and uh, so these are these are to be written on by hand on a piece of paper uh, Uh, not, and the computer exercise would be separate so you need to get familiar yourself with the script and for that writing is actually very important so this this is the uh, prayers this is the document please do write these things okay and send it to us i want to see that you are actually doing it so you can take a photo of the page and send it to us by email i'll already give you the email okay so i'll mute myself also and you can write your suggestions comments as well as start working on this exercise right now it is 10 o'clock we'll resume like 10 10 or 10 11 okay
ओके एवरीबॉडी वेलकम बैक सो आई दोज हु हैव फिनिश्ड आई वी रिसीव्ड ऑलरेडी अ नंबर ऑफ रिस्पोंसेस दोज हु ऑलरेडी रिस्पोंडेड टू आवर ईमेल थैंक यू वी विल चेक रैंडमली अ फ्यू ऑफ देम बिकॉज इट इज नॉट पॉसिबल एज यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड वी हैव more than 600 participants registered for this class to check each and every class every exercise but we'll check randomly a few and we'll send you the responses uh, but uh, this is just a simply a copy so it should not require much of a uh, checking uh, you just need to be careful in order to copy them properly uh, second thing is those who have not been able to complete it yet and that's fine uh, we we would have these exercises posted actually on uh, uh our shared drive and shared drive address was actually sent to you in uh, uh the welcome email but i'll just show you once more where is it so that you know where the shared drive is so if you go to learn.kriya.org and uh, here you can say sanskrit course uh i'll just increase the screen size so that you can see a little better sanskrit course so this website is learn.kriya.org you go to sanskrit course and this is the web this is the site and then you can go to sanskrit course documents this is the link so if you go sanskrit course documents you will see the folders here class notes class videos exercises and powerpoint and other material and uh, that's where we'll put the class videos class notes also will be put in uh, exercises will be put in and then some mat other material so for example if you look at here i have put in a copy of bhagavad gita which is in both the fonts prayers which we chant in the class they are there and also the transliteration scheme which i showed you which has the link for transliteration tool Uh, and other things so uh, just to let you know that th this is our shared drive and uh, you have the link from sanskrit uh, learn.sanskritkriya.org so i'll just share this link again with you everybody in the chat window so the link for shared drive is now one thing i want to actually uh, tell you here that uh, this course the way it started actually so the way it started was in florida in miami ashram where i am this uh, some people were really interested in learning sanskrit and uh, they requested me here and i said okay fine we it's much better to actually have a physical class and you all come here and we'll have a very intense uh, two weeks for two days a uh, because they they apparently had the time to come so two days you uh, two weeks you come and we'll have twice a day and we'll have a very intense and you will be able to learn a fair amount and uh, there was one person who was organizing um, all these activities and in between we had this coronavirus uh, break out uh, it was not possible to have a physical class therefore the suggestion was made to make it online and i said fine we can do online it won't be as effective uh, but we can do online given the circumstances i was still in the favor of having a very limited number of people there so that we could have a very free interaction something like 20 and uh, uh, we could have these classes once or twice a day um, then after somebody suggested that since there are so many people who want to learn sanskrit instead of limiting it to 
why can't we open it globally because once it is online it doesn't truly really matter where the person is sitting and i said okay i was still thinking maybe our class size would be more like 50 or so uh, but considering now it's like 500 plus uh, right now i see the 330 plus participants but there were total number of parts people who registered um, who could not come every day actually who registered for the class is actually 600 plus so uh having this intensive schedule every class day uh, class every day may not suit many of you because sanskrit requires a lot of self-study the material which i would be posting you would have to actually go through that material and understand so that for the next class you can come prepared and you can ask the questions and whatever you may have you can send us the email and we'll try to answer whatever number of questions we can answer uh, regarding that email uh, i have uh, my brother disciple brahmachari ben baba here in miami ashram with me uh, he has uh, graciously offered his time to uh, handle this uh, uh, all these questions and queries and the exercise on the email of course as you can understand depending upon the volume we'll try to do whatever we can uh, but please do send nevertheless your questions and uh, comments and uh, uh, exercise solutions uh, so there was some feedback that in such a big class online class and particularly when many people they do not have any background whatsoever in sanskrit and they are also busy in doing their other things this intense schedule uh, for conducting classes every day six days a week may not be very practical people may not be able to be catch up with whatever is being taught so that feedback was there from some of you uh, i myself am of the opinion that we should actually reduce the class to alternate days so maybe like monday wednesday friday uh, please do send your comments what do you feel uh, how i want to see, listen your feedback from a larger perspective whether you want the classes six days a week or whether you would like classes alternate days like three days a week um, uh, personally given the commitment of the people and also some feedback i feel that now the class is online and such a huge group the three days a week may be more practical uh, but i would still wait for uh, you to actually respond to me and uh, accordingly once i receive your uh, feedback i would actually communicate to you uh, by email and we will decide whether we will want to have class tomorrow or start imagine so that you will receive an email um, so just wanted to let you know that how this history of this class how it started and how we ended up in actually such a huge online class which was not at all the plan uh, to start with but i'm happy that uh, i'm uh, so many of you are in, actually interested in sanskrit and this class has actually become a global class so of course many of you also showed interest but said that because of the time difference like in australia it's like past midnight they could not attend these classes and we understand that and they maybe in future um, we could offer a class at a time where other regions which are not able to participate in this class because of the time uh, difference they may be able to participate uh, so i'm very happy that so many of you have shown the commitment and i would sincerely request you to follow the lessons to follow the material and uh, you can ask the questions and we'll try to answer whatever um, uh, capacity we have uh, uh, from those questions okay so uh, uh, sick uh, now the so regarding the exercises i was hoping that we would actually get to two exercise today one is on the computer one is on the uh, uh, so on the uh, paper so paper one is already done so this is the second exercise which was supposed to be in the class so why don't you type it and use this tool sanskrit type the first verse of bhagavad gita and send it to me this you can even send in the zoom group chat or in the email actually you can send in the email fine because uh, so again uh, this anybody can because it's written on the computer anybody can do it on the 
uh, Devanagari as well as IAST because <laughs> even if you do not know Devanagari, you can just uh, type in the iTrans. So the way to work again, I want to show you. Uh, way to work again is Sanskrit. You go to this tool, you open this window, say from iTrans to Devanagari or IAST. Those who know Devanagari, they can choose Devanagari. Those who do not know, it's better to say IAST so that you can see what you are typing, whether it is producing the result uh, which you desire. Uh, it's, it requires a bit of practice and uh, for the homework, I actually have chosen for you to type more than just uh, one verse of Bhagavad Gita. But for uh, our class purpose, uh, I do not know if there is enough time. Probably not. But those of you can. Otherwise, they can do as a homework. Uh, uh, that is fine. Uh, uh, I just want to uh, make sure that whatever we have learned, we do practice. And uh, this is very important for you to keep up with Sanskrit language. It's not a trivial study. Sanskrit requires a certain kind of dedication and commitment if you want to learn. It's not at all trivial that you can attend one class and then you can forego or you don't uh, revise the lesson and then come next time because it builds up. It builds up on the whatever you learned previously. And uh, uh, for many of you who are getting exposed to Sanskrit first time, it may not, uh, it may require far more time to absorb the things. And that's another reason why I can understand that some of you said three days a week would be better. Uh, so, so depending upon your feedback, I'll send you the communication. How do we want to um, progress the classes? But please uh, do these exercises. And then there are th other exercises, exercise from home. And this is basically, I have put download Bhagavad Gita from document repository and write first 10 words from second chapter manually on a piece of paper. And again, you send this piece of paper to me. And exercise four, this is download class prayer document from repository and uh, type all the verses using Sanskrit tool. Uh, this is computer. Uh, and then again, you send me this exercise. So always write the exercise number whenever you are sending the solution of the exercise to me in the uh, on the computer. So uh, with this, and the time is coming to a close. You can choose. You can do the second exercise. This one now, uh, uh, but uh, basically, from our perspective, the class is finished. Uh, I would just take in two minutes if there are any questions uh, which I can answer from the comments. Um, so most of the people are giving the feedback. It's three days a week is better, um, and. Uh, I'll also check your comments in the email. So depending upon how how and what most people are actually suggesting. And also when you are saying three days, I'm proposing Monday, Wednesday, Friday, but please propose like which days would be better for you uh, out of the three days. Uh, and then we can accordingly keep those three days. Um, so there was a question that is there an alphabet in audio format that website which I showed you, uh, for practicing Devanagari that does have the alphabet and audio format. Um, So this one question is, if we do three days per week, when then how long will the classes last? Would we increase the course duration from three weeks to like four weeks or later? We can see that depending upon the availability and interest, we could increase the duration. Um, that is that is definitely a possibility. So somebody is saying that they cannot take the picture of the uh, paper sheet. These days, everybody's cell phone, pretty much, I, I believe everybody's cell phone has camera. 
so please do use your camera to take the picture uh, just take a nice picture so that it's very legible and then you can send it to us by email um, Okay, so those who are not able to catch up in this class or have to miss this class, but still would like to continue this course, uh, as I told you, the repository is there. We would be posting the class videos. We would be posting the class notes. We also would be posting all the other materials which we are discussing in the class. So including the exercises. So that way you would be pretty safe from the course material perspective. So with this, uh, I would like to close the class. Please do these exercise and send your comments and feedback. Uh, I would uh, do the closing prayers. So closing prayers. And those who, who you actually are joining using the cell phone may not be able to see it very clearly as I mentioned in the welcome email. So please use a bigger screen monitor or laptop. Then you should not have difficulty in seeing the text because there would be a lot of text, a lot of screen sharing. And uh, it's important that you have the bigger screen. Uh, cell phone alone won't work. Mm. Uh, uh, so these are the closing prayers. So this is a very popular prayer when it is mantra for everyone's well-being, more very relevant in our times when so many people are going through suffering. Uh, and then the next one is mantra for completeness and perfection. So we'll chant it together. Those of you know who may, uh, who can do, they can join me. Otherwise, uh, those, otherwise you just listen. Sarve bhavantu sukhinaha, sarve santu niramaya, sarve bhadrani pashyantu ma kashid dukha bhag bhavet. Om purna madaha purna midam, purnat purna mudachyate, purnasya purna madaya, purna meva vashishyate. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. The meaning of these mantras is, may everybody be happy, may everybody be healthy, may everybody see goodness all around, may nobody has any suffering whatsoever. Uh, and then the mantra for completeness, that the whole, the one which is the perceiver, that is perfection. The what is perceived, that is also perfection. From the one, the other arises. If you take the perfection from the one, from the another, what remains is the perfection. It, it is, of course, a mantra which requires a lot of explanation to understand, but it's a very beautiful mantra. And uh, we will see some of these mantras as our grammar, Sanskrit class progresses. Uh, we will see the meanings of uh, these mantras, that how do we arrive at these meanings? Okay, uh, with this, I would like to uh, conclude this class. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you.